Right, so for this video I want to go through accessing usernames and passwords remotely. Essentially, what we are going to do is we are going to use LLMNR poison, poisoning to get onto the uh, onto the box, well to get the username and hash um, for the user. Then we're going to crack that with hashcat and using Metasploit we're going to connect to the SMB service on the target, transfer the application across from our um, attacking machine, then migrate to the correct user space room interpreter, and then run Chrome Pass in order to um, take out the usernames and passwords. My reason for this is often we'll use the remember my password function on browsers. It saves us a bit of time and I suppose for convenience sake and we're not supposed to reuse passwords and so you know people find it easier to do that rather than trying to memorize a million and one passwords. However, I think that given how easy it is to do, the the way to do it should be to employ a separate password manager as opposed to in the browser. Uh, so if we carry on and um, see if you agree with me. Okay, so we're going to capture the hash now from our user. And I did previously have an issue, I sort of wanted to go in this, where obviously I've done this a couple of times now. And I had an error message that basically said that it's skipping the hash because it's seen it before. And so, quick Google. And that solves the problem. Um, it then allows us to see hashes that it's captured before. So if we just go to our Windows 10 box and when it decides to react, there we go. Yeah, so that, you see how I've tested it. No, that's just no use. Okay, can't get to it. Blah blah blah. blah. It's our Kelly box, and we've captured that hash. Now, that was ridiculous. So, try the right word. So we got the hash, and now we need to crack it like we did before with Hashcat, which I'm going to do on my Windows host machine because that allows me to use the graphics card natively. Um, so we'll just copy it from here to here. I've got copying set up between the guest and the host, so all is well. Well, I'm saying all is well. Um, and uh, I'll see you in a second when I do that on the uh, on the host machine. Right, so now we're going to crack the hash and we're going to do that on the um, host machine, as I say. Sorry, get my words. Um, and what we've done is we, we took the copied hash that we got from uh, Responder and pasted it into a text file that you can see here. That's got text. Um, for NTLM v2, the mode for Hashcat is 5600. You can get that from viewing the help file. If you do it correctly, there you go. So if we just go back up here to NTLM v2, and probably everybody's already spotted it, it would be useful if it was in some kind of order pretty sure until MV2 there you go I did find it I've got a rough idea what I'm doing 5600 okay so syntax is hash cat c4 e running optimize mode NTLM v2 the hash file which is 
and the word list we're going to run it against, which is the infamous rockyou.txt. So they run through. I have a very old graphics card, but there we go, we have it there. So it's cracked the password, and the password is there. Password 1, blinding. Mr. Castle is very security conscious. Okay, so this is going to help us now when we do our SMB relay attack through Metasploit, um, and I'll show you how we we figure out that it is vulnerable to that uh, and then we'll go on to do the Metasploit attack okay start recording all is well okay so in the bottom right hand corner we have the Windows 10 machine and now we're going to use our username and password that we cracked before to log on to the box and extract those usernames and passwords. So first thing we need to do is bring up MSF console or Metasploit and for some reason despite many cores it's still a pain in the backside for me. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to search because we know that we've got SMB And what we're going to go for is this one here. And the shortcut is just type use and that number. Clear the screen to get a bit of space. Show options. Okay, so our options are the R host, that's the remote host, the one you're attacking, SMB domain, SMB pass, SMB user. Not required, but they're going to make things a lot easier and go a lot smoother. So, and 2.168.2.1.2. Use a. No, set. SMB user. And we know our user is F. Castle. SMB pass. We know his password. Password one because we cracked it. SMB domain. We know that is most local. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> we have the attack the IP of what we want to attack. The pool the domain, the password, and the user. And so now we are just going to run that against our machine. All the time watching down in the uh, right hand corner. There's absolutely no reaction from the target machine. So you could be on that just happily cracking on and doing what you need to do. Okay, so we've gone in as authority system. Now under normal circumstances, you do, you do always assume that that would be the best thing to do because that's the highest level. What we're doing, however, is different, and I'll show you that a little bit later on. <clears throat> so, in here, you can drop to a shell. You could use any um, directory, really, to copy your exploit into, but I'm just going to do it this way. Um, I've literally no no reason why okay so it's not there in a minute okay so what we're going to do to copy it across we're going to use cert util uh, this is this is a patch as you can see it's an enterprise evaluation box it is patched it's up to date and under normal circumstances you wouldn't have RDP access to it. If you did have RDP access to it, arguably you could just browse. But I mean how how obvious do you want to be, yeah? Right. So in here I have the uh, executable that we're going to use. 
So I'm going to start a Python, not with that command, I'm not, Python web server here. Okay. And then here we are going to. URL no okay. file and where we're going to get it from five which is our attacking box what file we're looking for and what we want to copy it here as DIR, we're fine. <coughs> Excuse me. However, it's not going to work from here because because we are in as NT system authority or authority system, um, and the problem with that is that this. Uh, executable looks for the profile of the logged in user. There isn't a logged in, there isn't a profile for that user. So we had to do something else and it drove me crazy working it out, but here we go. So we come out of here, back to Meterpreter. You idea, see, we're authority system. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to migrate to the user. So we run PS look for a process that is being run by Mr. Castle and then we migrate to the PID which is there uh, and this is 5616 and then you can see the bit of Castle and if we come out of this all together, we can see now that we're F Castle, whereas previously we weren't. So to get back into the session, you do that. It's session number one. Go back into a shell. syntax for this is really quite simple and straightforward. It is chromepass.exe this text passwords. So call in the executable S text simply means to output it to a text file and in the name of the text file. Yeah. See the password file there and the size of it. Now I'm sure that people will comment and say there's other ways of doing it but they escape me for the second so just to reveal the password Execution policy bypass. Content password. Now we have the IP address of my uh, OWASP juice shop, the username, and the password. And that would populate all the way through all the other usernames and passwords as well. So then just grab that, copy, come out in your own time, F castle passwords dot text.
and then when it finally brings up nano its own time I really don't understand why this takes so long here we go place that in there and then you can see and it's it's where it's originated from so this is the same for any website where it's originated from username password and the password file you can use you can open other passwords other password files um, so that would then come in useful for that just enumerate your user and see what see what you can find um, and this is my reasoning for why we probably shouldn't be using the remember my uh, login on browsers it, this is the same across Firefox Opera um, there's many password recovery utilities uh, that could be used this way so there it is um, I'd love it if you subscribed um, enjoy it and I'll uh, I'll see you in the next video